Welcome back, Red Talks. Really know what it is. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't, make sure you go over to the Spotify and check out the exclusive episodes you got on the Spotify. And today, we're returned with another Rare Reactions. And today's a sad one, if I'm being honest with you. Because we're talking about 16 stabbings in five days across London. Um, this video hurts my heart when I hear this. Because it shows me that there's something that is making the kids want to kill each other. Not come together, but break apart. You see, because there's never a reaction without a reaction. So every time someone gets stabbed, there's other people that's close to that you that's going to go out there and ride or retaliate for that you. And then that means more people are going to get hurt in the process of all of this. So in beef, nobody ever wins. You see, everybody thinks somebody wins. When you lose a close friend, nobody wins, bro. Nothing will bring back the life and the soul of a close friend. That's why I said all beef doesn't work. Man's better off trying to work together to build something than just beefing each other. I'm telling you, bro. Beef never ends with anything good happening on anyone's side. It always ends in somebody losing. You always lose in beef. Always. And I don't care how many people you get down, somebody is always losing. And today we're going to be reacting to this because you know what, yeah? The problem is bigger now. It's so big now that I don't think there's any stopping what's going on. I generally think it's only going to get worse in the coming months and the coming year. Because last year they said the amount of deaths went down. But don't get it twisted. People were getting stabbed. They just weren't dying. People were getting stabbed. People were getting shot. They're just living. But now we're in a, we're in a generation now where this has become fair seeming. You know what I'm saying? Stabbing people and getting away with stabbing people and rapping about it. And I believe the more demonic the music becomes, the more demonic the kids will become. Because the kids making the music have to live out what they're saying. You see, you can't make this kind of music, this drill music, if you're not living a certain particular lifestyle. Because other men will try you. And that's what you don't want. So I understand the game. So we're watching this reaction video. It's on Scar City Studios. And we're going to watch it. Khan has announced that they will spend 8.5 million to tackle violence in the capital after 16 people have been stabbed in five days. In this episode, we're going to talk about some of them cases that we've covered and also some of the actions that have gone on since then and some of the charges. The first story is dated the 7th of February and it was a five hour standoff with police where one male and one female were in an address in Upton Park. Thank you to UB1 and UB2 and Dave Nathan for their coverage from the scene. Police were called at 10 to 9 in the morning to the address on Wortley Road, E6. The police were conducting an arrest for a male that was wanted for an offence relating to threats to kill. A male inside the house held a woman hostage and refused to leave the scene. Police were there until quarter to two and they arrested him on suspicion of threats to kill. Nobody was injured in this incident but there was a lot of police in attendance. Threats to kill to me is like threats to kill is a serious thing because if someone's threatening to kill someone or like making out threats to kill or like saying raw watch I'm gonna see I'm gonna dump you or like for me threats to kill is a serious thing but my thing is if you're threatening people that means you're not really about what you're saying but because you're just going around making threats and let me just put this out there to every young man out there that's on the line and making threats don't make threats to people if you don't want to die, bro. Because if you threaten someone's life, they could take that as that you're trying to take my life. So I'm going to take yours first. So be careful with this threatening to kill people. Like when I see you, I'm going to dump you or, or this and that. Because some men will think in their head, okay, cool. I have to make sure I protect myself. You know what I'm saying? So just be careful when you're making these threats to kill. Threats to kill is a serious thing. You can't threaten people's life and think that people are going to take it. People might take it deeper and want to take the thing deeper. You know what I'm saying? So be careful when you're out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what? Well, I'm going to shoot you. Be careful what you're saying to people. Because some people might be like, cool, I might have to do you now to even stop the retaliation. You know what I'm saying? So... A man was shot on the 9th of February at 10 to 9 in the Eriff area of Bexley. This was on Pembroke Road. 
Police said they found a male a short distance away from where the shooting took place and despite the best efforts of emergency services, he died at the scene. Inquiries are ongoing to understand his identity and road closures were in place and footage from the scene, thank you to UKNIP, shows police investigations underway. Detective Chief Inspector Chris Wood said, At this early stage in the investigation, we are trying to find witnesses to the incident and also anybody that's in a Land Rover in the area that was abandoned later on by people they believe are connected. They also believe the vehicle will have front damage as well due to the impact that must have occurred before the shooting. The second incident. So a man was shot and killed. So it's real out here. Man, man gets shot and killed every day, but... I think that youth that got shot and killed, my brethren knew him still. Um, my brethren friend said he knew him. Um, yeah, man, condolences to his family. On the, the incident on the 10th of February at 20 to 2, police were called to reports of shots fired in New Malden. Officers and the ambulance service attended and found a male 29 years old suffering a gunshot wound. He was taken to hospital for treatment and remained in a critical condition. No arrests have been made and the inquiries are ongoing. I see in all of this, that like, shooting and stuff, I think it kind of makes us numb. You know what I'm saying? Man playing Call of Duty all day, shooting up the place, and then man watching this and man shooting up the place. Man's just thinking shooting's normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's getting pitched. It's dangerous out here. Like, everybody's getting smoked. But the thing is, yeah, this is not even, um like, this is not even half of what's actually happening. Does that make sense? Like, there's more stuff happening, but this is what's being reported. But there's lots of stuff going on in the UK, especially in London. London seems like such a nice place, but there's a bag of shootings and a bag of things. Look, New Morden, like, who lives in New Morden, bro? Despite the best efforts, one of the men died and his family have been informed. He has been identified as Trey Daly, aged 26 years old, from Bromley. The second man, aged 24, was discharged from hospital. The latest update in relation to that is that a 37-year-old male has been arrested and also charged with his murder. DCI Eastwood said... 37-year-old man stabbed a little boy. Some of us older men are trying to live our second childhoods. We still think we're gangsters from the early 2000s until like, like, bro, like, what are we doing? As grown men, like, what, why am I catching, unless man's done something directly to me, but then what am I doing in the streets at 37 years old? Tell me what is a grown ass man at 37 years old in the streets trying to duppy people, bro. And I'm not saying that you can't get caught up in something where you, you're in a situation where you have to do something. But I'm saying in general, bro, like men as grown men, some of you grown guys, you're living your second childhoods out on the streets, bro. You're still running around. You can't turn the other cheek. Bro, as a big man sometimes, man's got to say, you know what? I'm not even involved and just keep it moving, bro. For the sake of your kids, for the sake of your mother, for the sake of your family, for the sake of your relationship. Sometimes the bigger man is not the man that pulls out a knife and stabs him. The bigger man is the man who can walk away and control himself, bro. And he lives to see another day. So what if people say, I'm a prick and I'm a, I took an L. So what? You think them same people are going to be with me when I'm in prison, bro? Doing 35 rec or 26 rec. Man sitting in long Latin blood. A double A cap. Just roasting, done out. My whole life is prison now. Some people let their pride and their ego get beyond them and it makes them do stupid things that they regret. When they're sitting in that police cell for the next 10, 15 years, they're like, it wasn't even worth it, bro. Man's rubbed out their life. You get a 20 wreck now and you, you go and do what? Man's doing all 18, 19 years, 20 years in prison. You come out when you're 55, bro. No one even knows you, bro. Your life's all half over. Mum dead, daughter all older, married, got partner. Like, what are you doing, big man? Sometimes I feel like, as older men, like we need to be talking to the youngsters, not trying to kill them, bro. But I feel like we can defuse a lot of things by just having conversations, knowing where they're coming from, knowing where their anger is, knowing 
We was once them. It's crazy to me sometimes, man. He expresses sympathies to the family and they have specialist officers working with them at this time. The inquiries are ongoing to work out how he was stabbed near the Colour Factory nightclub in Queen's Yard, just off White Post Lane. In this next story on the 13th of February at 4pm, police were called to reports of an assault on the high street in Sutton. Police attended and the London Ambulance Service and Air Ambulance found a 15-year-old boy with stab wounds to his back. He was taken to hospital and his condition is non-life-threatening. Two suspects, both believed to be teenage boys, were arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and also robbery and inquiries are ongoing. And the headline story of this video is the quadruple stabbing outside the Duke pub in Wood Street, E17. This occurred at quarter past eight on the 13th of February and police were called to the stabbing involving a machete. Officers attended with the London Ambulance Service and they found three men inside the pub with stab wounds and a fourth male was found on nearby Chernell Street. The victims are aged between 22 and 42 and were taken to an East London hospital. Their injuries are non-life-threatening and police were called to support and patrols were carried out in the local area. Detective Inspector Grant Stevens said, We are in the early steps of the investigation and we'd like to ask anybody that was inside the pub to get in touch. The news of the attack is concerning and they'd like to reassure the community that this was a targeted attack and this is not a risk to the public. So I want to send my condolences to the family of the male that hasn't been identified yet and has lost his life and also the family of Trey. We'll definitely keep you updated on anything to do with these stories and send your news to news at scarcitystudios.com. So yeah, the quadruple stabbing, um, three, well, four people technically got stabbed. Um, and that shows you how the streets are. The streets don't have no, like, there's no mercy out here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's carrying because everybody's scared. But the thing is, yeah, I genuinely believe that they need to put more things in place. The government needs to put more things in place to try and tackle the mindsets of these young men. And I feel like the only way you're going to tackle these mindsets of these young men is if we give them other alternatives to killing each other. And it's not done through music because we've done the music thing and it didn't help the kids. So what is the other ways? Me personally, I've got many ways and solutions. And I think that we need to start working on solutions and what we can do. Because um, a, a wise brother said this to me once. He said, when the body's stabbed and it's wounded, the body heals but the mind doesn't. So I feel like we got a lot of kids out here that are suffering from trauma. I feel like we need to start like a trauma unit for youths that have been stabbed. Second of all, I feel like we need to get people out of areas because it seems like it's become fashionable to talk about stabbing and drilling and doing this because, bruv, I heard Sutton and Morden blood. That's when I know that the world's over because I'm from South and them areas ain't popping. So I don't get how... It's going down in them areas. Obviously, there's new people growing up now. So, like before, everything had an order. Like you had youngers and you had olders. And the olders would show the youngers. Nowadays, you got these new youngsters that have no olders and just creating their own name and legacy by putting in work. By Let me just put you something. Putting in work means nothing. Being a bad man means nothing. It doesn't make you bad because you stabbed someone. It doesn't make you bad because you drilled someone. It doesn't make you bad because you shot someone. The real top dog is the man that takes care of his family. And I feel like we're not getting this message out to the youngsters. We need to start telling them the truth, bro. A lot of us elders need to start rising up and we need to start sitting down and, you know, even talking to our sons because some of us even got children that's involved in this. Daughters and all sorts. We need to start having some proper conversations about what's actually going on and how can we support the community and trying to change this. Us sitting around saying, well, it's not my child is not good enough anymore because it will be our child eventually because it's coming so close to home and it's happening everywhere. So I don't think knife crime and stabbing can stop, but I believe that we can talk to some youngsters to try and divert them away from that. You know what I'm saying? Whether that's getting them into some sort of trade, helping them start businesses, um, getting them out of the area where they're having all this beef, because I believe when you're stuck in the area, you're naturally going to be involved in this. You're naturally rolling with your blades. You're naturally going to protect yourself. So protecting yourself could mean taking someone else's life. And I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm not here trying to be a hypocrite. Like I wasn't on stuff when I was younger. I'm not going to sit here and say that. But I'm going to say to you right now, it's not worth it. 
I've done it. It's not worth it. it. All of this life is not worth it. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. And the, the best thing I ever did was take my shahada and, and leave the roads, bro. That was the best thing I ever done. Don't, I don't let anyone fool you, bro. I found peace. I couldn't find peace in this stuff. All I was feeling is anxiety and, and, and depression. Like, people think, like, shanking people up, doing badness to people makes you a good, like, makes you a bad man. It makes you not have peace in your heart. You will never find peace harming others, bro. Because your soul will never find peace. And because you're living that lifestyle, it will always come back to you in some sort of way. So you're always going to be in a state of anxiety or depression or paranoia. And even years after leaving, you still suffer from paranoia. And it's, it's, it's deep. You're going to need, like, they're going to, I generally think that they should be holding classes and courses for young men that have gone through the roads because it's crazy how your mind is still, like, worrying. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Big up to all the youngsters out there that don't carry a knife, that don't need to stab someone, that don't need to be a gangster. And they're just at home playing computer, getting their books done and acting as a law-abiding citizen. There's nothing wrong with being a civilian. Let me put it out there to everyone. Being a civilian is the best thing sometimes, yeah? And all the little youths out there stabbing up civilians, you need to go to prison forever and never come out. One of the main solutions I see to this is harsher sentences. Man, give man the death penalty. You think you can go around taking people's lives, we're going to take your life as well. And I guarantee you the knife crime will stop. Because man will be like, if I poke him up, I'm going to dead. You still want to dead, you know? Because they make prison sound like it's like a boot camp, like you're in there with all your Gs. But you're in there by yourself. No matter how much you're with people, you're by yourself. Every day you go to that cell, you're sitting in there by yourself. A man tells you when to poo, when to pee, when you can eat. Hey, no, there's no freedom in that, bro. Freedom is elevating your mind on a level where you understand who your Lord is and you understand your real purpose on this planet. And it's not to be stabbing people and to be a gangster and to be a drill artist. Trust me on that, my young brothers. But anyway, enough of me preaching, bro. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bow!